Hello everyone. I hope you people are fine. Assalamu alaikum. And let's begin our today's lecture. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Yesterday we left our lecture on brachial plexus. Not yesterday. Day before yesterday, we left our lecture on brachial plexus. So I guess uh, today we will be completing the rest of the 11 branches of brachial plexus along with the sensory supply. Okay. Then we will only be left with the brachial plexus injuries, which will be our last topic of upper limb. And that's it. Okay. Then we will begin lower limb from the next lecture. There is one more thing which I want to mention over here is that there are a lot of students who contact me on a daily basis and they kind of appreciate and like my the way of teaching i am really very thankful to you all that you are listening completely and giving me that level of respect Everything which I'm doing is uh, not for any profit. It's kind of that I went through this situation in my life, which you are already in. And I can understand that pain and the patience it requires. So that's the way of helping everyone. Okay. But... Um, most of the people kind of want to want me to start physiology some are saying that i should take the next topic as thorax and others head and neck so people i can't i can't start every chapter okay at one time one chapter at one time this is the process okay right now we are doing upper limb once we will complete upper limb then i will shift to lower limb okay and then we will think that if we have to take head and neck first or thorax first so there is no rush you guys do not have any exam right now it's the situation right now is like you know very unpredictable and i don't think that you will have your exam this year so let's not rush you all have been preparing from a long time and there are people who were kind of hopeless and uh, as the same way they got hope by watching my lectures so especially to them there is no rush, people. If you're getting this material, oh, just avail it and be patient. And we will eventually be completing it. Okay. So without wasting more time, I want to begin this. So in my last lecture, I taught you this stuff okay we made a brachial plexus together and i told you how to make it it's been uh, the second the second day today and you guys must have practiced it i gave you like a time of more than 48 hours so people if you have not practiced it you should but if you have then very good okay so today we will continue our lecture from here okay just a bit of overview like for maximum two or three minutes uh, an overview of yesterday's lecture and that was How to make it, what are the five main branches of upper limb, then uh, uh, of brachial plexus. Then I told you that uh, 
about the chords, lateral chord, posterior chord, and medial chord. I told you the correlation of these chords to the roots and to the roots to the chords. Okay, from the roots to the chords and to the chords from the roots. So I, I told you all all this correlation. I also told you that there are no branches from divisions. Okay, then I told you about the anterior and posterior rami. I showed you the picture. I told you about the posterior triangle of the neck. I even showed you a picture and brachial plexus entering into the posterior triangle and arising from there to the shoulder. Then I told you that if uh, a patient got a stab wound injury in the axilla, the portion of brachial plexus that will be damaged is cords because cords can be seen in axilla and when these cords will be damaged all the uh, branches coming from the roots even these main branches you know there will be an effect on all of them so uh, you have to remember this point that cords can be seen in axilla if anyone have missed my previous lecture or if there is any new student who joined me today uh, so people you can go back and uh, you can check the video lecture of brachial plexus uh, from the date 7th june okay you can go and check that lecture i have told you how to made it and i covered all these six points these six boxes which are written over here i explained you every word of it so i will not repeat it again because uh, the people who have already listened that lecture and learned it will waste their time Okay, then I also told you that about these MCQs and I said to you that this is a very important page. You have to remember this page. I told you how C8, T1, 5, C5, C6, C7, all these spinal nerves contribute to make these chords. Okay, so also from again way back from the chords to the roots and from the roots to the chords. So I told you these correlations. I told you how it is very easy to understand. Uh, if any one of you have any problem in understanding the correlations and you think that this all stuff which I've written on these pages are very hard and difficult to learn or understand, guys you do not have to mug these points okay you do not have to make these points if you are going through my lectures i never learned them you know i never learned them if you will ask me that okay tell me the contributions from c5 c6 spinal cord they are made from which uh cords of brachial plexus i will not say it like you know you'll just ask me and i'll say you the ne next second that it comes from lateral and posterior cord C5 and C6 comes from the lateral and posterior cord. I can tell you like that. What I will do is I will take a paper and a pen and I will draw brachial plexus and I will tell you that, okay, it comes from here. So it will take me like half second, not even one minute. It will take me half a second to draw brachial plexus without labeling. And I will quickly tell you that, okay, it comes from here. So. In this way, you can do in the exam also. We spend a lot of time on MCQs in the exam, like half minute in reading and understanding the MCQ and then answering. But uh, if you have like practiced this brachial plexus very well, you don't have you don't have to mug these MCQs. You can just solve this stuff really quick. And for that, you have to uh, listen my all lectures of brachial plexus. Okay. So listen the previous lecture if you have not, and I will continue with the rest today and I will finish it today. So from tomorrow, we will go to injuries. So guys, there are only two lectures. Uh, invest your time and understand. Okay, there is no need to mug these sentences. I have never mugged that for my exam and I mark these MCQs right also with this pattern which I'm teaching you. So you have to go through with this pattern that I'm teaching you to reach that level. Okay. Um, I told you about the anterior posterior uh, divisions that 
how they are made these cords how they are made and i said you to leave this uh, muscle portion and the skin supply and the muscle okay the muscle and skin supply i told you to leave these portions because for these portions you need to um kind of go through the complete branches of brachial plexus which are total 16 in number and we only have studied five okay so today from today we what we will do today what is our lecture of today from here all these all these 11 branches you see there are total 16 in number. We only studied these main five branches. Now, the minor branches of brachial plexus that are 11 in number, these are remaining. We have to study them. We have to study the skin supply of upper limb, right? Both arm and forearm, okay? We have to uh, study the functions of these ner main nerves, and we have to study the nerve supply uh, to the the innervation to the muscles okay so and they are innervated by all the 11 minor branches of brachial plexus so you again you do not need to mug these sentences if you listen to today's lecture you will be learning it eventually with me okay we will today our like to we will today finish our lecture on this page page number 14 we will be covering page number 12 13 and 14 from this pdf okay if you do not have this pdf for the new learners you can get the link of this pdf in the description below the video and if you like my channel please subscribe it so that you may get the notification in hand okay next okay about this brachial plexus injuries all these deformities we will uh, do it tomorrow so let's begin uh, i will not make the 11 branches over here if you have uh, made this like really big and clear so you can mark the 11 branches on the same otherwise take a few minutes pause the video make another brachial plexus only for the minor branches and don't try upper trunk a and p and all these names of cords on it just just leave these lines blank okay if you want to write only write these names of main branches and leave this all lines blank okay so that there may not be a mess so if you, if you have not drawn it that neatly draw it again like this draw it again like this pause the video draw it again like this okay this is on your screen draw it again like this but my opinion to you would be do not draw it by watching it i said you to practice and learn it you should not be drawing it watching on the screen just pause the video keep your phone upside down and make this by yourself okay then check if you have made it right and then continue it with me so okay just an uh, overview of this brachial plexus before moving to these uh, rest of the 11 branches i have already written the names over here so that it may not uh, cause a problem for you people okay now c5 c6 c7 c8 and t1 these are the five root values of brachial plexus okay all these roots nerve roots are entering into the are made up of from the anterior rami okay not from the posterior made up from the anterior rami these nerve roots and then they enter into the posterior triangle of the neck and from that posterior triangle it moves towards the shoulder and upper limb clear at the level of your axilla you find these cords so the roots trunks and divisions all of these things are present at the level of neck okay and at the level neck and shoulder okay and at the level of axilla you will see cords and the main branches then are present at the level of arm and forearm. 
clear now uh, first of all starting from the roots i will take this gray color and i will make i will make roots so take your pen and draw the roots with me now first of all come to the key okay you see uh, over here it is written from roots what is the problem with this thing okay it's gone now uh, here it is written from roots okay from piche chhup gaya hai from roots so there are two nerves that are arising from roots number 1 is dorsal scapular nerve and number 2 is long thoracic nerve okay dorsal scapular nerve long thoracic nerve so there are only two nerves that are arising from roots but the question is there are only five roots c5 c6 c7 c8 and t1 from which level from which root level these nerves are arising this is the question so the answer to this question is both the nerves are arising from c5 c6 okay both the nerve roots are arising from c5 c6 now with me with me draw dorsal scapular nerve draw it with me dorsal scapular nerve and mark this nerve as number 1 mark this nerve as number 1 okay you see the key over here numbers over here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 11 so that is why i named it as key so that you may not write the name the complete name of nerves over here it will make your brachial plexus very messy you can always make key have you ever studied maps in your school life we, we every time we study a map we have a key so just take it as a map a diagram okay and don't write the names over here it will make it messy so just uh, mark number 1 at c5 that means that dorsal scapular nerve root value is c5 okay i will also i'll also like to write c5 in front of dorsal scapular nerve okay so right make this key with you i will place this picture also on my blog page and i will place the link in the description below you can download it from there after you complete the video and you can make a photocopy of it if you want to and attach it into your notes but it would be great if you will uh, make this whole thing by your own self write it down from your hand okay it would be great so uh just write number 1 dorsal scapular nerve root value c5 and make it here then number 2 number 2 is long thoracic nerve number 2 is long thoracic nerve so long thoracic nerve root value is very important it is c5 C six and C seven. This is long thoracic nerve. So long thoracic nerve root value is C five, C six, C seven, and right here number two. Right here number two. Okay. Also, I would like to write here C five, C six, C seven. okay c5 c6 c7 long thoracic nerve 
Now this long thoracic nerve is very important. This long thoracic nerve is very important. So I am making a steric over here so that you may remember that it is important. Why it is important? You have to remember these root values, C5, C6, C7, because in the MCQ, they can make it this way. Um, they can make a MCQ that a patient comes to the clinic. A patient comes to the clinic with the scapula moved backward and downwards and the nerve damage which nerve is damaged or the nerve damage has a root value of c5 c6 c7 now that c5 c6 c7 will be a hint for you people if they'll not make it that way they'll clearly ask you that which is the nerve so you have to check the options and you have to mark the nerve long thoracic nerve now how do you uh, understand that we are talking about the long thoracic nerve by the scapula downwards and backwards why by the winging of scapula the word this this presentation is shown in winging of scapula okay this presentation is shown in winging of scapula so you have to remember uh, that long thoracic nerve innervates a muscle which is called serratus anterior muscle if you want to write it in front of long thoracic nerve in the bracket, just write down serratus anterior muscle so that you may remember this point. Long thoracic nerve inner weight serratus anterior muscle. Okay. And uh, when this nerve is damaged, when the nerve root C5, C6, C7 are damaged, when this nerve is damaged, the um, serratus anterior muscle is paralyzed. And the patient shows a presentation of winging of scapula. I have uh, in the MCQ session we did last time, uh, I have placed an MCQ and I guess that was MCQ number 20. And I asked you which statement is wrong in that. So there were four statements about winging of scapula and they all were right. Only one statement was wrong, right? So guys, if you have not checked that MCQ, go and check that MCQ. It is from the book Snells and it is a very good MCQ. That is why I placed it so that you may understand what is the presentation of winging of scapula. That MCQ have everything you need to know about winging of scapula. That is why I placed that MCQ. Okay, so everything which I'm placing here is not unnecessary. Okay. Uh, okay, let's so that is why I made a steric over here so that you may remember that I told you some important point from it and you have to remember it for the purpose of MCQ. Now there are, uh, we have studied two nerves, two minor nerves from the brachial plexus. One of them is dorsal scapular nerve and the other one is long thoracic nerve. Okay, let's move to the nerve from the trunks. Now you see the uh, C8 and T1, there is no nerve arising from C8 and T1. Okay. And even long thoracic nerve is majorly arising from C5, C6. Okay. But only a slight branch is coming from C7. So, you know, last time when I was teaching you, last time when I was teaching you, the root values of axillary nerve, musculocutaneous nerve, radial nerve, ulnar nerve. So I told you about the lesions. I told you about the lesions. I told you that axillary nerve root value is C5 to T1. And I told you how it is C5 to T1. Okay. Let me uh, just revise that very quickly. You see axillary nerve over here. So how will you, 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 do, you don't need to mark or learn that axillary nerve C5 to T1, okay? You just have to check it, draw it in the corner of your booklet that you will be given in the examination hall. It will mm, take only 30 seconds. Just draw this brachial plexus quickly without labeling and just check it, okay? Write A and just check it, okay? Axillary nerve, we are going, just go backwards to the roots. When you have to check, 
from where it arises you have to go to that point from where it arises so you need to go backwards so follow this follow this pencil with me uh, axillary nerve and then you are going back you reach cord this is the posterior cord okay and then you see there are three divisions that are making posterior cord so you can go at this pathway at this path and at this path so you need to go to all three paths because all these three posterior divisions the yellow ones are posterior divisions and the blue ones are anterior so you see all the three posterior divisions are making the posterior cord from which two nerves are arising one is axillary and one is radial so that means the root value of axillary and radial is same because it's coming from the same focal point. Now, you don't even need to go back up till here. If you have a slight concept and, you know, uh, a common sense that all these three posterior cords are definitely coming from three trunks, right? So, and, and when we are talking about all three trunks, we are talking about all the five root values. Okay. And if you're not getting my point, let's go it. Uh, backwards so axillary nerve posterior cord this posterior division upper trunk and you reach c5 c6 okay uh, then we take this posterior division middle trunk and we, we reach c7 now we are taking this posterior division lower trunk and we are reaching c8 d1 so you see axillary nerve root value is c5 c6 c7 c8 and t t1 okay but I told you that there is a controversy because when we talk about lesions, we only say C5 and C6. So for this purpose, you have to, you have to hold that thought over here. I will come to this point when we will finish, when we will finish drawing these 11 minor nerves of brachial plexus and we will complete the lecture okay then we will come to this point again so you need to hold this thought over here that why we say lesions of axillary nerve are from c5 c6 okay hold this thought over here now let's move to the trunk also i told you the uh, muscle that long thoracic nerve innervates um I will also, I also want to tell you about dorsal scapular nerve that which muscle is innervated by dorsal scapular nerve. We already have studied this when we were doing the lecture on muscles and I guess it was lecture number two. So if anyone have not listened that lecture, please take some time and listen that lecture on muscles. Okay. Um, remember I told you that there are five muscles that connect the upper limb to the vertebral column i told you five muscles that connect the upper limb to the vertebral column and the mnemonic i told you was t l2 r2 t l2 r2 so that mnemonic t l2 r2 from the t was trapezius L2 was latissimus dorsi and levator scapuli and R2 was rhomboid major and rhomboid minor. So at that point, when I was teaching you the muscles that connect upper limb to vertebral column, I told you that rhomboids, both the rhomboids, rhomboid major and rhomboid minor and also levator scapuli. These three muscles are innervated by dorsal scapular nerve. If you want to check in the book, we can just we can just uh, go to that chart. What is the problem? Okay. You see, muscles connecting upper limb to the vertebral column. This is a chart from Snell Anatomy review book. Okay, not the main book, review book. And you see the mnemonic TL2 R2. And now find, just find dorsal scapular nerve written over here. 
there are three places where dorsal scapular nerve is written. Number one is levator scapulae. You see dorsal scapular nerve is written over here. Then rhomboids. Both the rhomboids, even minor and major. You see dorsal scapular nerve, dorsal scapular nerve. So I told you that you need to remember uh, the name of muscles and their nerve supply. Okay. That is important. Even if you forget the action or origin and insertion uh, is not asked in PMDC exam. So if you want to omit the action of these muscles, uh, TL2, R2, it's fine. But you need to remember the nerve supply at least. So if you want to write it down in your notebook in front of dorsal scapular nerve, just write the name of three muscles. Or you can write the mnemonic and mark tick tick on r double tick on r and tick on one l and you can just write in short form ls in front of it so that you may remember that you are talking about levator scapulae okay or write the full names it is up to you how you want to write and make your notes so if anyone is new to this lecture and have not uh, taken my lecture on muscles please check lecture number two and if you have not downloaded this pdf the description it is the the link is given to the description below okay now i have told you the muscle uh, the muscles of this nerve okay and also of long thoracic nerve that is serratus anterior okay now let's come to trunk you see we have three trunks. This is upper trunk. C5 and C6 makes upper trunk. C7 makes middle trunk because it is in the middle. Okay. And C8 and T1 makes the lower trunk. So it is present in the sequence into your neck. Upper, low, middle and lower. Okay. Now what I have written here that from trunk two nerves arise and both of these nerves arise only from the upper trunk. No nerve arise from the middle trunk. No nerve arise from the lower trunk. Both of these uh, nerves arise from the upper trunk. So let's make nerve number three and nerve number four. Make it with me. Draw two lines like this. Mark one line number three and mark one line number four okay now you have made number three and number four onto your brachial plexus what is number three it is suprascapular nerve and what is number four it is subclavian nerve again something you need to know very important for the purpose of exam, this is an MCQ coming towards you. I will mark, I will not make a static, but I will draw a line under the word supra. And definitely there is a purpose why I draw that line under supra. And the purpose is, you will tell me, what the word supra indicates. There is a muscle which I have already taught you all the muscles, okay? So I have taught you everything uh, about the muscles. So tell me the name of muscle from which supras to which suprascapular nerve innervates. A muscle which is innervated by suprascapular nerve. And the name of muscle is similar to the name of nerve and it starts with the word supra. Okay, there might be people who have answered to this question by now and there might be people who are still thinking. So to them who are still thinking, guys, if you remember rotator cuff muscles, I told, I have taught you rotator cuff muscles in my first or second lecture. We have four muscles. The mnemonic of rotator cuff muscles was SITS, S-I-T-S, SITS. S stands for supraspinatus, I stands for infraspinatus, T stands for teres minor, minor, not major, teres minor, 
and the last s stands for sub scapular so supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor and subscapulars subscapularis these are the four muscles which were innervated by which uh, which are rotator cuff muscles and from these four muscles there are two muscles which are innervated by suprascapular nerve so one of them has a name which starts from supra and that is supraspinatus that is supraspinatus we have a lot of space over here so uh, i will write it also supra spinatus now there is one more uh, muscle which is innervated by this nerve suprascapular one more muscle which is innervated by this nerve suprascapular and that is the make it brother or make it sister of supraspinatus as per your choice okay so i told you ke the names are identical supraspinatus infraspinatus so they sounds like brothers and sisters i told you that and the nerve supply is supra scapular nerve clear so remember this point this is your mcq okay also from this point just remember that these are rotator cuff muscles the mnemonic for rotator cuff muscles is sets this is s and this is i then the other t is teres minor and the other s is subscapularis just remember these things like this okay so when you will be revising to sath sath kuch aur cheeze bhi revise ho jayengi theek hai iske ilawa maine kaun sa point bataya tha ye to ho gaya ek point theek hai ये हो गया एक पॉइंट जस्ट राइट नंबर टू ओके आई ऑल्सो टोल्ड यू टू रिमेंबर नंबर वन रिगार्डिंग द नर्व सप्लाई टू मसल्स एंड दैट वाज सिराटस इंटीरियर इनरवेटेड बाय long thoracic nerve okay not for every muscle you need to remember the root value only remember the root values of five main branches musculocutaneous axillary radial median ulnar and remember the root value of long thoracic nerve so c5 c6 c7 okay plus you have to remember the clinical importance of this muscle clinical importance and what it is the clinical importance is winged scapula then i told you to check mcq number 20 from live session on muscles and joints okay clear so point number 1 point number 2 just take it over here okay make it a bit smaller uh 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 6 yes so that i can write more stuff over here 
and maybe uh, I do need to give space okay because space will take a lot of page so now we will go with number three when I'll find it that you should go okay so these are also your points to remember so one point you need to remember from roots is long thoracic nerve one point you need to remember from trunks is suprascapular nerve like not not these nerves but the correlations of these nerves like muscles and clinical importance and other things but uh, you need to remember the 11 branches and from where it arises and definitely you should know how to make it just as i am making it in front of you and i'm not seeing it from anywhere else so we are done with suprascapular nerve now the next one is subclavian nerve so what about subclavian nerve which nerve it uh, which muscle it innervates the name subclavian represents the muscle name that is subclavius so subclavian subclavius easy subclavian nerve innervate the muscle subclavius simple easy to remember let's move forward now divisions I am taking a lot of time to explain and write these stuff and repeat it again and again because these are important. Okay, so just have some patience and listen to the lecture. From divisions, from divisions, nil. I wrote nil. Nil means nothing, no nerve. Okay, so there is no nerve that arises from divisions. Now, just a quick recap from the previous lecture C5 and C6 roots makes upper trunk and this trunk gives two divisions the blue one is anterior and the yellow one is posterior come to c7 c7 middle trunk and again two divisions the blue one anterior the yellow one posterior c8 t1 makes lower trunk and the lower trunk again gives two division one is anterior the blue one is anterior and one is posterior the yellow one so all the three trunks give two divisions anterior and posterior okay so from these divisions no nerve arise no nerve arise from middle and lower trunk no nerve arise from all these divisions no nerve arise that means we are done with roots we are done with trunk we are done with divisions now the only thing remaining is cords and the number of nerves which are remaining are seven seven nerves are remaining five are these and four are these so five and four makes nine and how many we have in total 16 so seven nerves are remaining that means all these seven nerves arise from cords okay all these seven nerves arise from these three cords now again the same question the same question that how many nerves and what are their names that arise from lateral cord or posterior cord or medial cord so the name of cords are not like trunks upper trunk or upper cord middle trunk or middle cord no it is not like that we have upper trunk middle trunk lower trunk but we have lateral cord posterior cord and medial cord remember this previous lecture i made this picture and i have labeled everything i have labeled everything okay so uh, in this uh, picture i have not labeled over here because i don't want to make a mess out of it okay so let's continue with the cords if you if if you forgot and mix lateral and medial you don't remember which one is lateral and which one is medial go and check the previous lecture i i'm not gonna tell it over here okay so i have invested my time and energy in the previous lecture anyone who have missed it please go and check okay now cords we have seven cords we have seven nerves from these three cords now first of all let's make it together let's make all seven and then we will study 
it in detail one by one in terms of muscles okay let's make number 5 this number 5 lateral pectoral nerve arise from lateral cord right number 5 over here lateral pectoral nerve arise from lateral cord now also you see the name indicates the nerve has lateral in it the cord is called lateral cord so it is easy to remember that lateral pectoral nerve arise from lateral cord there are when when there is a lateral pectoral nerve there should be a medial pectoral nerve also because lateral medial are opposite to each other so uh, whenever we i told you whenever we talk, talk about flexion there is extension when we talk about abduction there is adduction so similarly when we talk about lateral there is a medial also okay so when we talk about upper there is a lower also so a lateral pectoral nerve we have a lateral pectoral nerve we also have a medial pectoral nerve so the lateral pectoral nerve arise from lateral cord and the medial pectoral nerve arise from the medial cord so this is your lateral cord this is your medial cord so mark number 9 this is number 9 right number 9 so we have made 6 we have made 5 so apparently it should be 6 but this is not 6 because i have marked it 9 so you have to write here 9 this is number 9 i may i may write it below it okay why i have not made number 6 after number 5 because i want you to remember that lateral pectoral nerve is arising from lateral cord and medial pectoral nerve is arising from medial cord and this is the medial cord this black line is the medial cord this black line is the lateral cord and this black line in the middle of lateral and medial is posterior cord why it is posterior because it is present posteriorly and it is made up by the posterior divisions of all three trunks okay that is why it is posterior clear now you see come to number 6 7 and 8 why i have made these boxes there is a reason why i have trapped these three uh, three three nerves i have made this group of three into two boxes because you see we have three cords we have studied this lateral pectoral nerve we have studied this lateral pectoral nerve okay now come to 6 7 8 and i have trapped this 6 7 8 into one box that means all these three nerves arise from the same cord all these three nerves arise from the same cord that is why i have trapped it in one box okay and same goes to these th this this group i have trapped 9 10 and 11 into a same box because all these three nerves arise from the same cord clear now make 6 7 and 8 with me so we are done with the lateral cord now comes to the posterior cord from the posterior cord make 6 what is number 6 it is upper subscapular nerve upper subscapular nerve number 7 lower subscapular nerve so make it downwards just so that you can remember okay from the direction you can remember upper subscapular nerve lower subscapular nerve and number 8 is thoracodorsal nerve so you can make it this way or this way up to your choice i will make it this way okay so 6 7 8 upper subscapular nerve this one this number 7 is lower subscapular nerve and then number 8 is thoracodorsal nerve okay let's study thoracodorsal nerve first because it is most important from this group 6 7 8 the most important one is thoracodorsal so we will give it importance priority and will study thoracodorsal first and then i will tell you the uh, the uh, muscles that are innervated by the 6 and 7 okay 
so because it is important again i will make a steric in front of thoracodorsal nerve you also need to make a steric in front of thoracodorsal nerve okay colored steric thoraco dorsal nerve which muscle is innervated by thoraco dorsal nerve this is an mcq so number third important key you need to remember for the purpose of mcq is which muscle is innervated by thoraco dorsal nerve and again now again the same mnemonic the name of muscle lies in the same mnemonic tl2r2 this is a mnemonic for muscles that connect upper limb to vertebral column remember this chart muscles connecting the upper limb to vertebral column tl2r2 okay we we studied this tl2r2 for dorsal scapular nerve so again the name of muscle the name of muscle is from this chart and we have already studied levator scapulae rhomboid minor rhomboid major for the nerve dorsal scapular nerve so three muscles to khatam these three muscles are cancelled now we are left with two muscles trapezius and latissimus dorsi so thoraco dorsal nerve in me se kis muscle ko supply karti hai which of these from which of these two muscles is the answer it is written in front of you thoraco dorsal nerve innervates latissimus dorsi okay and trapezius is innervated by accessory nerve accessory nerve is cranial nerve number 11 cranial nerve number 11 accessory nerve is cranial nerve number 11 so uh, none of the nerve of brachial plexus innervates trapezius it is innervated by cranial nerve and ye jo hum c c pad rahe hain c3 c4 c5 c6 c7 c8 ye sare jo c hain that these c are cervical okay सर्वाइकल नर्व्स अलग हैं क्रेनियल नर्व्स अलग हैं मिक्स अप नहीं करना है क्रेनियल नर्व अलग हैं सर्वाइकल नर्व अलग हैं सर्वाइकल नर्व का मतलब है कि वो सर्वाइकल वर्टिब्रा से अराइज हो रही है ओके द सर्वाइकल नर्व एंड द क्रेनियल नर्व आर टू डिफरेंट नर्व सर्वाइकल नर्व इज अराइजिंग फ्रॉम द सर्वाइकल वर्टिब्रा ओके सो दो नेवर मिक्स दिस Now mark an MCQ over here that latissimus dorsi is innervated by thoraco dorsal nerve. This is your MCQ. Latissimus dorsi innervated by thoraco dorsal nerve. Okay, latissimus dorsi is innervated by thoraco dorsal nerve. This is your MCQ. I have made a steric over here. You have to remember it. Do not remember the root value of thoraco dorsal nerve. You can also forget that it comes from the posterior cord. Okay, but do not forget which muscle it innervates. Okay, done. Now we are done with number eight. Let's come to number six and seven. Number six is upper scapular nerve. Number seven is lower subscapular nerve. Not scapular. Uh, dorsal was scapular, but upper and lower are subscapular. Subscapular. Okay. Subscapular. So beneath the scapula, beneath the scapula. Okay. So upper and lower are subscapular. so which muscles upper and lower subscapular nerve inner weights
let me show you okay in lecture number 2 of muscles we have studied the muscles connecting the scapula to the humerus okay we have studied the muscles connecting the scapula to the humerus humerus is the bone of arm okay and scapula is present at our back so from these six muscles from these six muscles okay by the way all these six muscles and the nerve supply are important you need to remember the six muscles and the nerve supply okay and also the action of deltoid in terms of abduction angles and supraspinatus in terms of abduction angle okay you need to remember the action of these two muscles and all these muscles with their nerve supply so we are only talking about upper and lower subscapular nerves as you see lower subscapular nerve in front of lower subscapular nerve you see the name of muscle teres major and in front of upper and lower subscapular nerves you see subscapularis so the mnemonic to remember it's not a mnemonic basically it's a short story by which you can remember that i have made for my own self you can learn it for yourself also or you can like create any other if you want to subscapular nerve the word is subscapular is similar to subscapularis okay so once there was a fight in between upper and lower subscapular nerves that who will take this muscle subscapularis okay just 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 i have created a story there was a fight in between upper and lower subscapular nerve that who will take this muscle subscapularis because uh, both of the nerves name is identical to this subscapularis okay it resembles the muscle name so in order to finish the fight in order to finish the fight our what our creator did our creator said that both of you can take this muscle both of you can innervate this muscle so the muscle become very happy okay so both of the nerves are now innervating it so upper subscapular nerve innervate subscapularis muscle and lower subscapular nerve innervate subscapularis muscle so this is a short story which i made for myself to you know to memorize and you know avoid mixing in the exam because exam ke andar sab kuch mix up ho jata hai theek hai now comes to lower subscapular nerve now how you will remember that uh, teres major is innervated by lower or upper you know we we just know that only one muscle is innervated by these two nerves which was subscapularis ye problem to solve ho gaya कि वो कौन सा मसल है जिसको दो नर्व्स इनोवेट कर रही है ये प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व हो गया नाउ द नेक्स्ट प्रॉब्लम नेक्स्ट प्रॉब्लम इज टीरियस मेजर इज इनोवेटेड बाय व्हिच वन वी नो इट इज वन नर्व दैट इनोवेट टीरियस मेजर बट वी डू नॉट नो कि कौन सी वाली है अपर है या लोअर है सो अनदर स्टोरी अनदर स्टोरी इज टेक अपर एज एल्डर द एल्डर वन ओके द एल्डर सिबलिंग and take lower as the younger sibling so the one which is younger is already is already innervating one muscle okay lower subscapular nerve is already innervating subscapularis but because it is younger it is lower okay we are giving another muscle wait you know ek ke sath ek free to <laughs> One on one free. Okay, so lower subscapularis nerve is innervating teres major, also. So this is another story, just to remember. Okay, so you can work it like this. So now we have studied how many nerves from cord section? Four. Four. We have studied four nerves from cord section. 
five but uh, I, i didn't tell you the nerve supply or the muscle the muscle innovation of it okay so not of even lateral pectoral nerve so hold that thought over there now you know the uh, every detail of this of these nerves they are arising from the posterior cord which are these upper subscapular lower subscapular and thoracodorsal which muscles they supply okay upper subscapular innervates subscapularis muscle lower subscapular innervates subscapularis and teres major and thoracodorsal innervates latissimus dorsi okay now we are left with the last group from cord section that is number 9 10 and 11 medial pectoral nerve medial brachiocutaneous nerve medial antero brachiocutaneous nerve now uh, i have already made medial pectoral nerve theek hai with lateral pectoral nerve ke sath sath humne bana li thi lateral pectoral nerve arise from the anterior uh, from the uh, lateral cord and uh, medial pectoral nerve arise from the medial cord now uh, i will tell you the muscle sub muscles of it just just hold that thought over there hold that thought over there first of all let's draw number 10 and 11 okay hold that thought over there because i have another story for it that is why i'm telling you hold that thought over there now uh, number 10 okay Number ten is medial brachiocutaneous nerve. Medial brachiocutaneous nerve, and number eleven is medial antero brachiocutaneous nerve. अब मैंने इनके भी डायरेक्शन चेंज कर दिया आई हैव चेंज द डायरेक्शन ऑफ दीज टू नर्व ऑल्सो ओके वाई लेट मी टेल यू यू सी द वर्ड ब्रेकियो कोटेनियस एंड यू सी द वर्ड एंटीरो ब्रेकियो कोटेनियस द नेम ऑफ बोथ ऑफ दीज टू नर्व आर इंटायरली सिमिलर मीडियल ब्रेकियो कोटेनियस नर्व मीडियल एंटीरो ब्रेकियो कोटेनियस नर्व द नेम्स आर सिमिलर ओके वेयर इज द डिफरेंस विद द वर्ड एंटीरो विद द वर्ड एंटीरो सो बिकॉज ऑफ दिस वर्ड एंटीरो आई हैव जस्ट uh made it in like opposite directions the word antero doesn't means opposite okay anti means opposite antero no i i don't know if it if it means opposite so the concept behind brachio and antero brachio cutaneous is that um one of them first of all let me tell you that uh the importance of these nerves that they are cutaneous nerves cutaneous word cutaneous means skin okay cutan se nikla hai cutan means skin so they have sensory supply they do not have motor supply all the nerves which supply to the muscles and you know muscles have the action of movements we call those nerves as having motor supply but when we talk about the supply of the skin any any nerve which is innervating the skin okay and all the sensation the feel of touch warmth pressure okay a pain all the sensations we have on our skin all these messages are delivered to our brain and returned back to the the reflex arc okay so this all work is done by nerves so these are the two nerves with the word cutaneous that has sensory supply so from these entire total 16 branches of brachial nerves there are two nerves that entirely have sensory supply no motor supply uh, we can we will also see sensory supply from these five main branches we will also see that and we will study that but for now when we are talking about these minor branches of brachial plexus there are only two nerves that are having sensory supply only sensory supply and that is number 9 and number 10 Uh, sorry that is number 10 and number 11 medial brachiocutaneous nerve medial antero brachiocutaneous nerve so you can identify them by the word cutan okay now the next question brachio and antero brachio theek okay, hai what does these indicates what these words indicates now you see um, we are talking about upper limb so definitely upper limb ke major portions kaun se hai what are the major portions of upper limb arm and forearm right arm and forearm so when we talk about arm we are talking about 
anterobrachio when we are talking about arm we are talking about anterobrachio now how you will remember anterobrachio with arm again i am writing it down over here within another color okay because this is an this is a point from okay arm is equals to antero brachio just remember it this way arm is equals to antero brachio forearm is equals to brachio okay arm is equals to antero brachio forearm is equals to brachio a a simple concept a a a red color from red color a a easy to remember just remember it this way a and a arm antero brachio forearm brachio so we will go to actually the sensory supply but uh i want to I have a picture in notes as well and i have drawn halfway but let me show you from notes okay see you see this this picture this is a picture from the sensory supply we will study it in detail for now just see that this 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 is arm and this is forearm okay so the medial side this we i have drawn a vertical line like this so this side is lateral and this side is medial so from the medial side you see this arm portion is the skin of this arm is innervated by antero medial antero brachiocutaneous theek okay? hai and the uh, from the forearm the medial side of forearm the skin is supplied by medial brachiocutaneous so now it is easier for you the word medial represents the medial side of not only the medial cord not only this medial cord of brachial plexus okay you, you can you can uh, identify the from the word medial that they are arising from the medial cord but you can also identify the uh, location of skin supply on your hand that the lateral side of your uh, hand both arm and forearm okay is innervated by other nerves but the but when we talk about the medial side the skin supply of medial side you see arm has antero brachio with an a a with an arm and a antero brachio and the forearm by brachio cutaneous so this is also a way of learning that which side we are talking about let's go back to the plexus now you are done with medial brachio cutaneous and medial antero brachio cutaneous nerve सेंसरी सप्लाई पढ़ ली किस को सप्लाई करता है विच साइड ओके नाउ लेट्स नाउ लेट्स गो बैक टू दैट थॉट विच आई टोल्ड यू टू होल्ड वॉज द इनोवेशन ऑफ लेटरल पेक्टोरल एंड मीडियल पेक्टोरल नर्व वेरी इजी कॉन्सेप्ट आई एक्सप्लेन यू वेन वी वर स्टार्टिंग मसल्स फ्रॉम लेक्चर नंबर टू ऑल्सो आई एक्सप्लेन यू द सेम कॉन्सेप्ट वेन वी वर डूइंग एम सी क्यू सेशन ऑन जॉइंट्स एंड मसल but i will repeat it again if you have not learnt it by now which is very bad or for for the new people which are listening to this lecture the very first time now lateral pectoral nerve medial pectoral nerve let's write number 4 point number 4 which you need to remember now i will write the name of muscle for name of nerve first lateral pectoral nerve okay and number 5 medial pectoral nerve okay equals to likh rahi hu innervate innervates nahi likh rahi samajh khud hi samajh jayega Uh, अभी इतना तो समझ आ गया होगा कि हम नर्व्स जब नर्व्स और मसल्स की बात करते हैं तो वी से दर्ड इनर्वेशन ओके सो 
लिटरल पेक्टोरल नर्व किसको इनरवेट करती है और मीडियल पेक्टोरल नर्व किसको इनरवेट करती है विच ऑफ दीज टू नर्व विच विच मसल दीज टू नर्व इनोवेट टू ओके सो देर इज अ मसल विच इज इनोवेटेड बाई बोथ ऑफ दम एंड देर इज अ मसल विच इज इनोवेटेड बाई ओनली वन ऑफ दम एंड देर इज अ वे टू रिमेंबर देर इज अ मसल द नेम ऑफ मसल इज फ्रॉम पैक्ट ओके इट इज फ्रॉम पैक्ट एंड इट इज सेम I am drawing a line beneath pect and pect. For you to remember, I am drawing these two lines beneath pect and pect, just so that you may remember both of them innervates a muscle whose name starts from pect, and that is pectoralis muscle. That is pectoralis muscle. Now, which pectoralis muscle? Good question. We have two pectoralis muscles. Okay, we have two pectoralis muscle. We have a pectoralis major and a pectoralis minor. Okay, so the story is pectoralis major. The word major is represents big. Major, bada, big. Minor, chota, small. Okay, so. the big muscle the major one we are giving it two nerves we are giving two nerves to the big muscle because it is big it needs more and more supply more and more innervation okay so lateral pectoral nerve innervates pectoralis major muscle and medial pectoral nerve also innervates pectoralis major muscle clear medial pectoral nerve lateral pectoral nerve both of them innervates pectoralis major muscle because the muscle is major big so we are giving two nerves to that muscle now another question we have another muscle which is called pectoralis minor because it is a small so we are giving it only one nerve okay we are giving two nerves to major and one nerve to minor now which from which of the following nerves innervates pectoralis minor muscle is it lateral pectoral or is it medial pectoral now again there is a way to remember and that is you see minor starts from m and medial starts from m does lateral starts from m do you start, do do you pronounce the word lateral as metral no l l is an l and m is an m okay so this is a way to learn that medial starts from m and pectoralis minor the word minor starts from m so you can remember it this way okay and just so that you may remember it for a very long time this these these simple stories or the ways to remember i am underlining this m and m so that you may remember that we remember minor with this concept okay and also minor by one muscle and major by two muscles so um we will write an other thought over here with the black that major two muscles okay and minor one muscle so this is also a way to remember major two muscles and minor one muscle and now you can see pectoralis minor only one muscle medial pectoral nerve and m and nm 
ठीक है याद रहेगा एक बंटी भी होती थी एम एन एम के नाम से सो यू कैन रिमेंबर बाई दैट एंड पेक्टोरेस मेजर बड़ा है तो टू मसल्स एंड टू मसल्स आर लेटरल पेक्टोरल नर्व एंड मीडियल नर्व आर मीडियल पेक्टोरल नर्व एंड लेटरल एंड मीडियल ओके सो ओके अपॉलोजीज फॉर सम स्लिप ऑफ टंग ऑफ मसल एंड नर्व बिकॉज इट्स बीन टू मच नाउ ओके सो हेयर वी कंप्लीटेड द सिक्सटीन ब्रांचेस ऑफ ब्रेक एल प्लेक्सेस we have studied all the 16 branches okay now let's count do not look on the key do not look on the key okay let's just count number 1 dorsal scapular nerve number 2 long thoracic nerve number 3 what was number 3 supra scapular nerve number 4 subclavian nerve number 5 lateral pectoral nerve number 6 अपर सब स्कैपुलर नर्व नंबर सेवन लोअर सब स्कैपुलर नर्व नंबर एट थोराकोडोरसल नर्व नंबर नाइन मीडियल पेक्टोरल नर्व नंबर टेन मीडियल ब्रेकियो कोटेनियस नर्व नंबर इलेवन मीडियल एंटीरो ब्रेकियो कोटेनियस नर्व एंड देन एंड देन एंड देन एंड देन एंड देन नंबर ट्वेल्व मस्क्यूलो कोटेनियस नर्व नंबर थर्टीन axillary nerve okay number 14 median nerve number 15 radial nerve okay number 16 ulnar nerve fu done all 16 nerves sab yaad ho gayi sara bana liya sare मसल्स देख लिए ठीक है सीन ऑल दी मसल्स ऑल्सो अलोंग विद दिस अच्छा इफ यूर इफ यू आर थिंकिंग दैट आई डेंट आई डोंट आई डेंट टोल्ड यू अबाउट दीज मेन ब्रांचेस एंड देयर मसल्स इफ यू रिमेंबर व्हेन आई वाज टीचिंग यू व्हेन आई वाज टीचिंग यू द मसल पोर्शन आई टोल्ड यू दैट मस्क्यूलो कोटेनियस वी गिव वी हैव गिवन कंपार्टमेंट्स नाउ just because you guys have a very bad memory uh let me no let me make something for you hmm So what is this? बस अभी इस लेक्चर को खत्म कर रहे हैं ठीक है ताकि सेंसरी सप्लाई पर फिर हम नेक्स्ट लेक्चर बनाएंगे वो भी मैं अभी बना के अपलोड कर दूंगी तो यू पीपल कैन स्टडी कर ताकि हमारे पास सिर्फ इंजरीज रह जाए अच्छा क्या हो रहा है क्यों हो रहा है ऐसे वट आई वॉज टेलिंग यू या आई फॉर गॉट सो ओके नाउ जस्ट Just for some time, just think कि अभी मैंने ये मैंने बनाया है I have made arm and forearm. Okay, this is arm and this is forearm. आर्म एंड दिस इज फोर आर्म और ये मैंने बीच में लाइन खींची है एल्बो ज्वाइंट सो एल अब द एल्बो ज्वाइंट एल्बो बेसिकली डॉर्सल पे होता है अगर मैं प्रोनेटेड हैंड पे देखूँ तो क्यूबाइटल फोर्सा ओके दिस इज अ प्रोनेटेड हैंड ठीक है एनाटमिकल पोजीशन में आप खड़े हुए हो आपका हाथ एनाटमिकल पोजीशन में है यू आर स्टैंडिंग इन एन एनाटमिकल पोजीशन योर हैंड इज प्रोनेटेड ओके इन एन एनाटमिकल पोजीशन एंड दिस थिंग व्हिच यू आर सीइंग इज क्यूबाइटल फोर्सा जस्ट लुक एट योर हैंड ओके दिस थिंग व्हिच यू आर सीइंग इज क्यूबाइटल फोर्सा नाउ अबव द क्यूबाइटल फोर्सा यू आर हैविंग आर्म एंड बिलो यू आर हैविंग फोर आर्म नाउ वी हैव आई टोल्ड यू इन मसल लेक्चर दैट arm has two compartments and forearm has three compartments okay we divide the muscle groups into compartments and these compartments are divided by fascia okay 
so arm has two compartments the first compartment is anterior and the posterior so anterior compartment posterior compartment when you are when you are standing in a, in an anatomical position and when your hand is pronated the the side of hand which you are seeing which is facing to towards your face is anterior and the one which is facing in an opposite direction is posterior so uh, make your hand in an anatomical position touch the part of your hand and say anterior compartment okay then touch the part of your arm from the posterior direction and say posterior compartments so that you may learn anterior and posterior now come to forearm in forearm we have three compartments anterior posterior and lateral so a anterior the one which is pronated which is in front of your face okay the back one was is posterior and the uh, side one which is away from your body okay is lateral so we have anterior lateral and posterior clear now i told you if you remember that musculocutaneous nerve we give it a compartment we give musculocutaneous a compartment and what is that compartment what is that compartment which we give to the musculocutaneous nerve there is a compartment which we give to the musculocutaneous nerve there is a compartment which we give to radial nerve there are only two nerves that supply these compartments remember bbc the mnemonic for flexors anterior compartment have three flexors three muscles which are flexors and a mnemonic was bbc brachialis another b is biceps brachii and c is coraco brachialis and all these three muscles are innervated by musculocutaneous nerve so musculocutaneous nerve innervates this anterior compartment of arm which is consisted of three which consists of three muscles b b and c and all these three muscles are flexors okay also now this is this this all is revision this all is revision i have taught you that another point about uh the action of muscle is all three of them are flexors but but bicep brachii is flexor and is a supinator also is a flexor and is a supinator also and that comes into your mcq every time now come to radial come to radial i'm skipping these come to radial when we talk about radial nerve the posterior compartment of arm which has two muscles triceps and enconius these two muscles present in the posterior iske piche chale gaye ye abhi samne wala anterior hai piche wala posterior so if you talk about posterior it is innervated by radial nerve and there are two muscles in the posterior compartment that is tricep and enconius and both of these two muscles are extensors extensors okay they extend the shoulder now comes to now come to the forearm okay first of all i will tell you the posterior compartment and the lateral compartment and then i will tell you the anterior compartment there is a reason okay i am choosing the posterior and lateral okay if you remember in the lateral compartment there were two muscles if you do not remember just open your notes and check it out okay i am not i am i am not uh, dragging this page up and down and will tell you everything is written on these notes and i have told you this all in the second lecture so this is all this all we are doing is revision so lateral compartment when we talk about lateral compartment there are two muscles that are present in the lateral compartment and both of these two muscles are innervated by radial nerve the whole the whole lateral compartment is innervated by radial nerve and when we talk about the posterior compartment we have 10 muscles in the posterior compartment of forearm 10 muscles okay and uh, all of these 10 muscles are innervated by radial nerve so lateral compartment of forearm posterior compartment of forearm and uh, anterior compartment of and sorry and posterior compartment of arm they all are innervated by radial nerve posterior compartment of arm and forearm lateral compartment of forearm so if we talk about total total muscles two from posterior 
टू फ्रॉम लेटरल टू फ्रॉम पोस्टीरियर ऑफ फोर आर्म सो टेन प्लस फोर फोर्टीन फोर्टीन मसल आर इनोवेटेड बाई रेडियल नर्व सबसे ज्यादा रेडियल नर्व इनरवेट करती है ठीक है सबसे ज्यादा रेडियल नर्व इनरवेट करती है नाउ इफ यू वॉन्ट टू चेक द नेम ऑफ मसल द वे हाउ अब मैं मुझे ये याद है ना आई नो इट आई एम टेलिंग यू आई एम नॉट आई एम नॉट लुकिंग एट द पिक्चर आई एम टेलिंग यू एवरी थिंग ठीक है बिकॉज आई लर्न इट दिस वे सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू नो हाउ आई टोल्ड दिस होल स्टोरी एंड हाउ आई मेड द निमोनिक्स एंड हाउ आई मेड यू लर्न जस्ट एज आई मेड यू लर्न दिस लेक्चर टूडे यू हैव टू गो बैक एंड लिसन टू लेक्चर नंबर टू ओके नाउ Now let's talk about median and ulnar. When I talk about median and ulnar, the now there is only one compartment left. That one compartment is a forearm is uh, anterior compartment. So when I talk about the anterior compartment of forearm, we have total eight muscles in the anterior compartment. Five of them, uh, five of the muscles are starts with P, and three muscles start with. Uh, sorry, five five of them start with F and three of them start with P. Okay, and I told you that all the P ones, all the P ones are innervated by median nerve, and among the five Fs, there are only two Fs that are innervated by ulnar nerve, and the rest of them are innervated by median nerve. So what are the two Fs? So what are the two Fs that are innervated by ulnar nerve? I told you a mnemonic to remember that is UP from an Indian. Uh, Uh, place name that is called Uttar Pradesh. So I told you that you have to remember from the mnemonic U P. Flexor digitorum ulnaris U for ulnaris, okay, and flexor digitorum profundus P for profundus. So if you remember in this way, then you will never forget that flexor digitorum ulnaris F D U and flexor digitorum profundus F D P are innervated by ulnar nerve, and all the rest of the muscles. okay these are two muscles we have total eight muscles in the anterior compartment so the rest of the six muscles of the anterior compartment are innervated by median nerve clear so this was the story of arm and forearm but when i talk about hand abhi baki hai abhi median ulnar ki supply baki hai theek hai when i talk about muscles and i talk about median and ulnar so hand and wrist is remaining when i talk about hand portion ठीक है पॉलमर डॉर्सल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ देंड्स वेन आई टॉक अबाउट द मसल्स ऑफ हैंड आई टोल्ड यू अमोनिक एज हाफ लोफ ओके एंड आई टोल्ड यू दैट दिस हाफ लोफ इज इनोवेटेड बाई मीडियम एंड द रेस्ट ऑफ द मसल्स अपार्ट फ्रॉम हाफ लोफ इज इनोवेटेड बाय अलनर सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू नो वट द वर्ड हाफ लोफ स्टैंड फॉर गो बैक एंड लिसन द लेक्चर नंबर टू मसल्स ओके और जो लोग सुनते आ रहे हैं यकीनन उन्हें पता है और उन्हें मेरा एक एक लफ्ज इस वक्त समझ में आ रहा है कि मैं क्या बता रही हूँ ये सारा ये सारे ये सारी मेन ब्रांचेस फाइव मेन ब्रांचेस इनकी हम मसल मसल्स पढ़ चुके हैं ठीक है इनसे रिलेटेड हम पढ़ चुके हैं सो दीज वर रिमेनिंग एंड वी हैव कम्प्लीटेड दीज एक्जलरी अगर आपको जानना है तो एक्जलरी डेल्टॉइड मसल एक्जलरी इनरवेट करती है ठीक है एक्सिलरी इनरवेट्स डेल्टॉइड एंड एक्सिलरी इनरवेट्स टीरीज मेजर आल्सो ठीक है तो ये आपको याद रहेगा टीरीज मेजर और डेल्टॉइड एक्सिलरी सो यू नो आई आई हैव नॉट आई आई डोंट हैव अ बुक विद मी राइट नाउ एंड आई डोंट हैव यू नो नॉट एनी नोट्स और आई एम नॉट सींग एनी थिंग एंड आई एम जस्ट टेलिंग यू सो यू कैन ऑल्सो लर्न इट दिस वे ओके सो इट जस्ट टेक्स यू हैव टू टेक सम टाइम you have to invest your time in memorizing the stuff like this and you will never forget it in your whole life so on that note we have completed i don't know humne kitne baje start kiya tha but on that note we have finished uh, all the 16 branches of brachial plexus so listen to this lecture make it draw it theek hai and uh, just 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 repeat it again and again learn it and then you will be done with it so on that note i am ending this uh, lecture today's lecture on brachial plexus okay guys work on it allah hafiz